What's happening, party people? Welcome to Punch More Party. I mean, My name is Danny. Wow. And then he starts going, What? <laughs> <laughs> he talks about me being loud. What the, what the hell is this? <laughs> <sighs> What's happening, party people? I mean, Welcome to this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's the last time. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Got him. <laughs> you got me. You got me. <laughs> What's happening, party people? Welcome to Punch for Party. My name is Daniel. This is Father Greg, and this is John. John is my good, good friend. We met years ago in Nova Scotia. We lived together there, and then we've been reconnecting all over our lives. And finally, John is visiting us in Saskatoon. And so Father Greg and I get the opportunity to hear out his top 10 board games of all time ever. And so party people, as always, please comment down below what you think of John's list, what you like from John's list, and especially what you think John might like to play based on his list that he gives today. So John, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Give us a little heads up about kind of how you put your list together. What was your process? Uh, there was a couple things that I sort of looked at. Uh, the main thing that I did was I just sat down in front of my collection and I just looked at my games. I looked at the whole shelf and because if there's something that I like, I will buy it. So I just think if I'm if it's going to be from my top ten, I already own it. So I just sort of sat there and visualized, and then I thought about which games do I play the most often. Right. So the games that I play the most often, I probably like the most. Is that's sort of how I rated it? Okay. Uh, I didn't not not necessarily. There are some games on here that are a little bit newer to me, but most of them I've played many times. Right. So we should just get to it. Yeah. Let's go. First up, honorable start, mention. You're start, oh, you're doing an honorable mention to start. <laughs> First up. So uh, uh, there, there. Just, oh, I gotta get ready for this. <laughs> Star rounds. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Star Realms had as a great little like the, just the base game of Star Realms. You can pick it up for just at, you know under twenty Canadian dollars type of thing. Maybe not anymore. I don't know. What <laughs> no, I think there's a deluxe <laughs> edition now that right. you have yeah. to get. Yeah. <laughs> but at the time that I got it, it was just a little tuck box, and you opened it up and you just played the heck out of it. And if you wrecked them, you could just buy another box. Like it right. wasn't it wasn't like a collector's deluxe edition or whatever. But I played it quite a bit. Yes. Yeah. You, you've had this, yeah, for as long as we've been playing games together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Star Realms was one of the earlier games that I bought, so I really like Star Realms as an honorable mention. Okay. Not on the top ten. Not, not, top not, ten. not worth your time, party people. <laughs> That's right. Not worth your time. Ignore what he just said. All right, coming in at number ten, Pandemic Iberia. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Look at that. We get, we, get, we, get, we get Pandemic a lot on these lists. Mm -hmm. Usually yeah. Legacy. Okay. Usually yeah. Legacy. And so to get Iberia is just a fun little twist. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, right, what, is, right. what does Iberia do? Remind the party people what Iberia does. So Iberia adds a couple different things. It adds, it adds a ton of event cards, for one thing. There's like a wide variety of event cards in Iberia. And that's pretty neat because everything's different. But then it adds uh, a couple of modules that you can turn on and off. And they've got one where the patients are kind of heading towards the hospitals and they're kind of overwhelming certain cities and then you got another one where you can list any of the four diseases and the diseases will behave differently okay. so it's just it's just like pandemic kind of with an expansion almost like okay. it's sort of like if you had pandemic but you had one or two expansions turned on and you know in different ways and it's themed in like the early 1900s or something or 1800s or yeah I, I think it's late 1800s uh, on the on the Iberian Peninsula so mm. Spain and Portugal is just the whole the whole map you build railroads you purify water you don't actually cure the diseases you just research them so the diseases stay on the board they're still harassing you and that type of thing okay number nine Legendary Encounters, an alien deck building game. Ooh, -wee. Okay, yes. Okay. This is good. This was still to this day my most thematic first playthrough of, of any game. Right. Because when I played the game, the storyline and the cards that came out almost matched the movie. Not not a hundred percent, but like just the way and, yes. you know, I've played it probably thirty or forty times. Uh, mostly solo, I imagine. Almost exclusively solo. I have played it with friends, but I actually enjoy it more as a solo game because yes. I feel like the story is better in your head yes. than in the conversation. 
So when you play it with people, it's still fine. It works as a co-op, but I think that it's the story is better if you're just kind of immersed in it. Right. Have you played any of the other Legendary series, like Marvel Legendary or... I've never played Marvel actually as a base game, okay. but I have a couple of the Marvel expansions, and I'll play them with Alien Legendary. You can do that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he, I, he has a Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy, wow, Heroes okay. of Asgard, and the Marvel Noir are the three that I will play with the Alien. Okay. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, no, I, I, it's been a long time since I played this game, but this was the first Legendary game that I played as well. Yes, it is thematic. I, I... Yeah, well, I, I played the base Marvel Legendary first, and I found it very, like, generic in terms of, like, yes, there were all these heroes, and there were all these things that we were doing, we were going up against the bad guy, but it felt very narrative-less, you know? Like, mm. it didn't, the mm -hmm. narrative wasn't strong necessarily and so then to sit down and play alien with you and be like i'm in the movie mm -hmm. like there's the cat and there's yeah. like the face hugger and there's the you know like, exactly yeah it's yeah. really cool yeah i love it i still i still play it and it's it's uh it'll always have a place on my shelf yeah okay number eight father greg might not be too happy with this one I don't know. We'll see. Underwater cities. <laughs> okay, listen. <laughs> listen. Just because it's not in my top 100 does not mean it's a bad game. It's just not Vladimir Succi's best. Right, right. Uh, we, we went over to Dave's the other night, and Dave was so upset that Underwater Cities have fallen off of that's right. Father Greg's top 100. So we've been giving him a bit of grief. Oh, yes. Dave was convinced. He said, that's a mistake. <laughs> that's a mistake. <laughs> Now, to be fair, it may not be Vladimir Succi's best, but for me, it's Vladimir Succi's only game that I have played. Yeah, okay. Really? So if we can get a couple of his games played, you know, who knows? But yes, that's right. right. I, I like his style. I sure. definitely like his style. Right. It um, is fun. I, I like the, the... The thing that I like best about it is the fact that each card is colored, but, like, the green cards are really, like, impactful, but the action spaces... That the green cards give you are like, eh, so-so. Yes. Whereas, like, the yellow cards are, like, passable at best. So you don't really want to play them. But the action spots are crucial. You need, like, yes. you need to go to action. And then, right, it's kind of half and half. Yes. Uh, and so that kind of, like, ebb and flow of... You can go to any action space that you want, but, like, if you don't... If you go to the wrong one, then you can't play, like, a card of that... Uh, you know, your card and the action spot you play is have to, have to match. That kind of, like, that little ebb and flow of like, oh, this is a really good card. Oh, but I get to move up like one on the <laughs> diplomacy track or whatever. Right. Like, yeah, okay, fine, sure, I guess. Right. Uh, as opposed to like, oh yeah, this card, but oh, it's going to let me build like two railway connections and oh, that's juicy. Like that's, you know. Yes. It's a good tension. Yeah. I like because you, you as you're drafting the cards or not drafting them, but um, drawing the cards and you're choosing which cards to keep, there's a real tension inside of you because you, it's one of those games where you want to do everything, but you know that you're not going to be able to complete all of the plans mm -hmm. that you have. I also don't like stacking the little the little discs on top of each other. Like <laughs> they're you a little, have to stack like three kelp discs all on top of each other. They're a little slippery. Yeah, yeah, it, it's just a mess. Yeah, other than that the game's that's, fine. That's true. So with <laughs> with underwater cities, I really suggest buying the expansion, which is probably a little bit more uh, money then maybe mechanically it's worse. But the, the triple-sided board, or the double-sided triple-layered boards. Dual-layer uh, boards. Oh, man. Do they ever do they ever make that a lot easier? Because sure. like, the stacking is still, it's still fiddly, but the at least the base one stays in place. Sure. You know? Yeah. Number seven, Beyond the Sun. Sweet. Yeah. I wasn't sure where this was going to make it on your list. but Right. You figured it was going to be there. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So John and I, we sort of learned Beyond the Sun together. That's right. Online. Yes. And like, we didn't really know what we were doing. No. But what was cool about it is that eventually we were able to intuit most of what we were supposed to be doing. Yes. Um, which for a complex game is kind of nice when you can kind of find yourself falling in. Because mm -hmm. basically it's a giant tech tree. Right. That you're developing throughout the entire game. And so you really kind of have this natural ebb and flow of realizing, okay, if I get these resources and I can go here, if I accomplish this and I can go there and then that'll allow me to do this and yeah. I want to do that eventually and... It kind of guides you along, um, but it's constantly fraught with 
that classic, I want to do everything, but I can only do something. That's right. Something. That's right. Yeah. There's many ways to score points, or not many, but there's, there's a few ways anyways to score points. And you kind of, it's hard to diversify in that game. It's, it's a little bit easier, uh, at least cognitively, to like lean into one direction or another. Uh, I, I, I think you could diversify and win, but uh, I can't. <laughs> okay, number six, Snowdonia. There we go. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. So this is a dear, dear game to me. There's several reasons for it. Just, just he has a crush on Tony Boydell. Tony Boydell is, is probably the first reason. This my Tony Boydell is my main designer that I follow. Your your freaking wow. spirit. That's animal. right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's I love Tony Boydell. He's he's got this hilarious uh, blog on BGG that if you follow, like he's he's actually been censored a couple times by by BGG, so he can be a little bit. <laughs> You can be a little bit out there, you know, but uh, I'm you're like, kind of guy. guy. <laughs> I was say, you're kind of guy. No, I'm sad. Yeah. I'm a Tony Bodell fan. I don't know who this guy is. Yeah. I've never played any of his games. Right, right, right. Yeah, so, and it takes place in, in Wales, and I have Welsh heritage, so that's dear to me. It's a train game that has nothing to do with stocks and the, right, you know, yes. the investments right. to sell you that kind of thing. so it's a train game um it's a worker placement game it was one of my first worker placement games that i bought and it was at the time where i had to choose between two games and uh, my friend had just bought viticulture so it was going to be viticulture or snowdonia but the theme of snowdonia won me over okay and i i've enjoyed it i have two editions of it i might have three editions of it if i get the new one i'm not sure <laughs> if it's going to be another investment or not but uh snowdonia yeah number six love snowdonia wow is there snow in this game snowdonia is a mountain oh okay yeah so okay. there's a it's a mountain in wales you're, bu you're building a train track up this mountain that's right yeah so it's okay. it's uh you you are working together to build the track but whoever builds the most, not just the most track, but whoever gets the most points by building track and stops and stuff like that will win. But you're, you're building it together. One of the neat things is that there's a draw bag. And as you're drawing different cubes out that are resources, sometimes you'll draw an event cube. And the game starts doing the actions for you. So there's no way to drag this game out. Like it's, There's a couple worker placement games that were earlier that can be a little bit long. And Snowdonia is, is tight. Like 90 minutes is probably right. maximum that you're going to play Snowdonia mm -hmm. for. Like 60 to 90 minutes is probably about accurate. And the, the game just hurries you on at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Number five, Terra Nova. Wow. Number five. I don't know, man. You don't know? I've never played it, so I don't know. But like, <laughs> I don't I've know. I don't know. I've never heard of this game. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard of it? So I'm trying to think. Uh, there's a lot of Terra games right out right now. There are, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm trying to think which was Terra. So Terra Nova. Terra Nova was a different design team than Terra Mystica, but they, okay. they got the rights to Terra Mystica, and then they uh, cut a bunch of stuff and pasted a bunch of stuff. The you know the word they use is streamlined it. Sure. Type yep. of thing. So it's a simpler Terra Mystica. It's a shorter okay. Terra Mystica. Okay. Still has the factions. Still has the magic pools. All right, you're speaking my language. Yeah, you're okay. you're, you're building okay. some some buildings you out. Never even played Terra Mystica. I know. I don't want to. <laughs> but, but a lighter streamlined version. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. So <laughs> I played Terra Mystica with Daniel many years ago. Yes. And, and many times when I was visiting yes. you and. And it was really great. I really enjoyed it. But I, I never bought it because I thought I'm never going to be able to get a three-hour, really burn-brainy kind of game to the table with with many people. It's just it's going to sit on my shelf and I won't mm -hmm. be able to play it very often. So I never bought it. It's not it's not super cheap. Case in point. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, we're gonna we're gonna get we're gonna get uh Terra Mystica iteration played before you leave. Right, after this video. Right now. Yeah, maybe during the video. Yes. Yeah. Glad I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Terra Nova is is good because it's streamlined, it's simpler, and you can you can teach it very well. And I, I just find it's for me a better iteration than Terra Mystica because I can actually play it and get other people to play it and enjoy it. They do well at it. Like you know, you don't want to just teach a game and have people plot along. Like, you want them to be able to compete and stuff like that. And people can compete in their, you know, by the end of the first playthrough, they're starting to, to understand what they need to start doing. Right. So how streamlined are we talking here? What, what <laughs> an hour 
two hours? Under two hours. Okay. Yeah, under two hours for sure. With new players, maybe an hour and a half. If everybody at the table, I think it's two to four players. We usually play at three players, but mm -hmm. uh, we usually probably clock in just over an hour type of thing. Hour and a, hour and a quarter, hour and 20 minutes for three players type of thing. Sure. Number four, Dune Imperium. Yes. With Rise of X. Right. With Rise of X. Or... Immortality now. <laughs> wow. You liked it. I liked Immortality. I don't own Immortality, but Daniel does, and we just played it with Immortality, and I think it so was... So did Father Greg, actually. No, I didn't. That's a, that's a bold-faced lie. You take that back right now. <laughs> you did look at a couple hands. I, I looked at the game. Yeah. I, I watched the game being played. And right, thought, right, oh, right. Oh, this yes, looks like Dune. Yeah, Dune Imperium is a... I, I, I'm a big fan of the franchise, like the IP of Dune. Right. Nervous when Villeneuve was bringing out the movies, but since quite satisfied with his with his take on it. There's differences, fine. Uh, the game, and again, I was nervous when it was coming out because, like, how are they going to handle this? Is there, you know, and Dune Imperium, nothing to do with the, uh, what is it, Gale Force 9 Dune game? Yeah, that's right. Game. Yeah. Nothing to do with it at all. But it's kind of like my Terra Nova to my Terra Mystica. Like, I was never going to get Dune, the board right. game, to the table. Yeah, that's you right. know, that's a, that's a big, complicated game. And I, when Dune Imperium came out, also some people would say it's a fairly <laughs> heavy-ish or long-ish game. Mm -hmm. But uh, well, it plays way longer than it's supposed to. Like the box <laughs> time is like an hour, an hour and a half, and you're sitting there like with the new new players. You're sitting three hours yes. for doing a period. Yes. Then after that, you can play it in forty five to an hour. Like that's true. Yeah, yeah. It's. There's a lot of weird things in Dune Imperium that they're doing, and I think that once you get used to them, you can see them coming. Just as far as the intersection between, you know, the small amount of deck building and the large amount of worker placements. I think that's what holds people up, is, right. the, is those intersection between those two mechanisms. Mm -hmm. But without the, without the expansions, I find that there's a little bit of a problem later in the game with the Solari and the Spice. Uh, the resource, maybe maybe that was the design. Maybe Denon wanted that to, they kind of decrease almost in, right. in value as the game goes on. But with Ix or Immortality, I think it kind of fixes it a little bit and it stays a little bit more consistent throughout the whole game. Yeah. Number three, Tornay. Here it is. That's right. <laughs> Tornay. Wow. Not not Toi, not... Uh, not Toi. No, just, just Tournay. Just Tournay, yeah. So wow, okay. Tournay is a very dear game to me because I have played it so many times over the years. So many times. And uh, I was I was able to get my hands on it right before it went out of print. Now, I don't really speak French, but I had to order it from Quebec, and uh, it is in French. The whole thing is wow. <laughs> the whole thing is including the rule book. The rule book is totally in French, so I had to pick my way through it, and I was able to learn it. You know, like my French is very weak, but I was able to pick it. Maybe because I'm used to board gaming terms. Maybe I was able to. Wow, I'm impressed. Uh, I think you might be playing it wrong. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's maybe that's why I enjoy it so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Because you seem to like this a lot more than the community. That's true. That's true. It's number three on my list. I mean, it's way up there, right? So the thing with Tournay though is uh, people were expecting it to be Twa the card game. Mm -hmm. It is a completely different game. It just looks the same. So forgive me. I don't know the artist's name. It's all right. Don't worry about it. Okay, it's <laughs> that's fine. Right. The but, art is like good, but it's like. I like the art in Twa, but a lot of people don't. So, like, right. <laughs> nobody's right. going to be searching up the artist. Yeah, no one's going to be like going through the, the comments saying, you don't know who this artist is. Right. This is That's a right. travesty. Travis so, T. That's who it is. It's Travis T. It's Travis yeah, T. Yeah. Travis, <laughs> the art. Travis does great work. Yeah, yeah. No, he does. It came out, it was supposed to, or people thought it was Twa, the card game, which it wasn't. It was completely different. So that, that was a strike against it. Mm -hmm. Also, the player aid, admittedly, is terrible. This is a hard game to teach. Well, because, it's in French. Well, okay. My, play, <laughs> my player aids are in French. Uh, some of the people I play with are actually francophone, so they have no problem reading it. 
uh, linguistically, but they have a problem reading it iconography wise, right? right? Sure. Like it's the iconography in the game is weird. The player aid is weird. The the rule book is fine. The the end game trigger is confusing for people. So there's things that I wouldn't mind if Tornay got a reprint and a relook at the rules and maybe cleaned up the end game a little bit and a way better player aid, different icons and stuff like that. I think I think it could be a hit. I mean, it's like a card drafting, tableau building, worker placement game. These are mechanisms that people like mm -hmm. you know but uh it's it, it never really hit its run I, I i like playing it online and so that's i am playing it correctly because Good. i was able to play it online and realize that i had gotten the rule set down correctly so tournay is my number three of all time wow <laughs> okay my number two of all time no. Hi. Ah. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Ah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh. Okay. It's my number two game. Wow. Oh. Yes. So Hive is this perfect knowledge abstract game mm -hmm. for people who don't know. There's no board. There's just a bunch of hexes. <laughs> for, pe for people who don't know things. Well... There's lots so of people they lose. Don't. Oh, well, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, so when I taught it to Daniel, it was a poor experience on his part and maybe a maybe an uh, an unskilled teaching on my part. No, no, Dan's just a dumb dumb. It's fine. <laughs> don't worry about it. Dummy, right. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, I explained the rules, but maybe I was light on the strategy. Right, right, right. So I, uh, I played this game online first before I bought it. Mm-hmm. It took me 15 games until I got my first win. So when I was playing online with the community, I was like, lose, lose, lose. But every time you lose in Hive, you learn. That's right. So it's not really a loss. Like, I mean, it's a loss in the game, but like you're, you're still learning the game as you go. You're still learning the game. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple wonderful books out on Hive. Uh, Play Hive Like a Champion and Groundwork. Really? Wow. Yeah. And they're, there's they're, whole books on how to play yeah, Hive? Yeah, they're like 120, 150 page Holy kind of books. Wow. I, I have them both. Yeah, <laughs> I do have them both. And they are... Your love for this game is obscene. Yeah, they're, wow. they're wonderful. They're wonderful. Yeah, they're... And uh, I've had some some neat experiences online of playing some of the some of the world champions. Like, you, you know, you, you, you kind of randomly get assigned your right. opponents. And I've played a couple of the world champions, and that's like my... Okay. A little bit starstruck, almost, you know. There's, ooh, you know. It's, yes. It's really... And then, you know... And then you beat them. I did not. No, I did <laughs> not. Not, not Travis T. <laughs> not Travis T. <laughs> yeah. The world champion. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, Travis just, like... <laughs> threw me all over the ring that was it was embarrassing yeah no hive i really love hive i've taught it to a number of people and not many people have enjoyed it that i've taught it to but i do have uh one of my close friends my brother-in-law kyle he and i like it's like a 15 to 20 minute sort of game right mm. kyle and i like to sit down with a you know an ounce or two of whiskey and play like forty five minutes to sixty minutes of one game of high like wow. th this is like our we re like we don't talk to each other it's just we're just thinking and we're sitting at the table we're playing hive and it's just this wonderful experience that, that Kyle and I have huh yeah. wow I I can so I've played hive a handful of times I think Marion Dallas had it maybe still do uh, anyway so they they're the ones who taught it to me and. Yes, much like I think a lot of abstract traded games, chess, whatever, like you are going to be beat nine times out of ten yes. by somebody who knows what they're doing. Right? Yes. For sure. If it's your first time playing, it's like might as well just chalk this one up as a loss and yeah. be okay with it. It is fun. It's, it's, a, it's, it's yeah, it, you're right. The rules are very simple, but grasping, oh yeah, I see. If I move this grasshopper this way, that's going to allow you to do x y and z yeah, yeah. right yeah and yeah just you don't even if you know the rules you don't cognitively like see that that's right uh, until you've played the yeah game especially because there's no board so mm -hmm. you're not fully aware of where the pieces are going to go and sort of what the patterns will look like and that kind of thing but once you play it enough you start to see the patterns and the shapes and you can counter things sort of two or three moves in advance type mm -hmm. of thing wow number one here we go number one <laughs> Number one of best all time. Best game of all time. The best ever. Game. No doubts about no it. No doubts for anybody. Everybody will agree on this, I'm sure. The number one game of all time is definitely Carcassonne. Wow! Carcassonne. Oh, 
Oh, it's definitely go. the number one game of all time. There are reasons for this, though. Sure. Now, I know it's very old. Yep. And it has aged. There's many sure. tile laying games that have done things differently, maybe maybe better. They've improved on systems and stuff yeah. like that. Now, with Carcassonne, for me, this is like Dune Imperium. Inns and Cathedrals is sort of, mm. a, a, sort of needed yep. for Carcassonne. And I think that the reason is because, especially the roads, there's a lot of them and they're underpowered. So, by the luck of the draw, if you end up with a lot of roads, you can lose just by pulling road mm-hmm. tiles. Mm. Uh, there's the there's the fan variant, which I do like playing with and will play with, is the three tiles in hand. So, Carcassonne with Engine Cathedrals, three cards in hand variant. Mm. So, the thing with Carcassonne is it's super easy to teach. And unlike Hive, it's super easy to learn yes. <laughs> the strategy. Mm-hmm. I have had people... like I, I think that I, I enjoy Carcassonne and I'm a fairly decent player at it. I probably have a winning record or 50% yep. or whatever. But I have had people that I have taught them the game. And then during the game, they beat me. Right. So it's it's that it's that easy to understand and get into. Mm-hmm. It's, it's elegant. Oh, right. <laughs> that's nice. And we had such a wonderful playthrough when so, you taught me. When when I introduced you to it, it was such a wonderful playthrough. Yes, yeah, so that's... John, like, lapped my score. I it did. was embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> I just, like... That sounds very pleasant. Uh, <laughs> I, I enjoyed was, it immensely. It was rough. And it was early in my board gaming life. So yes. it was like, oh, wow, look at this. I won this game that's very complex for me. Well, gargantuan. <laughs> gargantuan. Yeah, I think I laughed you twice, maybe. Okay, listen. <laughs> <laughs> Enough with your lives. Right. <laughs> all right, party people, there we have it. Those are John's top 10 board games of all time ever. Let us know what you think in the comments down below about these titles. Let us know what you would recommend to John based on these titles. Uh, any recommendations that you might have. All right, party people, if you liked the video, please press the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until next time, party people, have the best day.